just like milk. Even international agreements have an expiry date. The one between China and the Vatican is no different. It was called a provisional agreement from the start, meaning it had to expire sooner or later. Actually, much sooner than later. October the 22nd, to be exact. On that date, or hopefully before, both parties will have to decide whether or not they want to renew the agreement provisionally for another two years or extend its shelf life indefinitely. Neither result is a foregone conclusion. Any agreement will be the fruit of slow, patient and consistent dialogue, much of which takes place behind the scenes. As far as Pope Francis is concerned, that kind of dialogue is still the only way forward. He said as much during the impromptu press conference on the return flight from Kazakhstan. E qui in Vaticano c'è una commissione di dialogo che sta andando bene. La presiede il Cardinal Parolin e lui è in questo momento l'uomo che più conosce di, della Cina e è in dialogo con i cinesi. Ma è una cosa lenta, ma sempre si danno passi avanti. Più qualificare io cerco di appoggiare la via del dialogo, perché nel dialogo si chiariscono tante cose, no? e non solo della Chiesa, sino di, di altri settori. No? So what are the things that need to be clarified between the Church and China that make this particular agreement so important? To answer that question, we have to turn the clock back to 1951. That's the year the Chinese government expelled the Pope's diplomatic representative. But only after keeping him under house arrest for two months and accusing him of spying and inciting revolt. Earlier that year, the apostolic prefect of Beijing was accused of the same alleged crimes and sentenced first to death and then to life in prison. Three years later, he too was expelled from the country. Soon afterwards, all foreign priests were forced to leave China. Now, an officially atheist nation, the government announced that it alone had the right to appoint any new bishops. Let's be clear. The provisional agreement between China and the Holy See is neither a concordat or a diplomatic pact. It's simply a mechanism by which China recognizes the Vatican's right to have a say in the appointment of new bishops. The exact terms of the agreement have never been made public. All we know is that bishop candidates are elected in local assemblies and proposed to the Vatican, which can then approve or refuse them. Supporters of the agreement argue that without it, the situation would be far more complicated and Catholics in China would be worse off. The fact is, there are still a lot of things that need to be clarified between the Church and China. For example, the Chinese government forbids its bishops from engaging with members of other bishops' conferences. Men and women religious are not recognized as such. And in order to attend Mass in China, you must be over 18 years of age. None of which appears to discourage the Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Pietro Parolin, who believes in taking one small step at a time. Our way of doing politics is about taking small steps. We believe that every result, even if it isn't striking, even if it isn't eye-catching, even if at first perhaps it seems to not yield big results, is however a step forward, toward the affirmation also of greater religious freedom. In a recent interview with Reuters news agency, Pope Francis defended this policy of taking small steps, calling it the martyrdom of patience. Diplomacy, he added, is the art of the possible and making what is possible a reality. If that reality eventually leads to greater religious freedom, then every small, patient step counts.